If you do any type of live streaming, you probably know that Blackmagic's hardware works really well together. If you have the ATEM and you connect it over HDMI to a Blackmagic camera, it can communicate back and forth. Not only can you get video out of the camera, obviously, but it can send information back to the camera and control the camera. However, HDMI only works really well over short distances. But what if you need to up your game, have a multi-camera setup across a bigger venue, like an auditorium or something bigger, and you need to use more professional cables and a more professional setup like SDI. Can you control your Blackmagic camera with an ATEM SDI device? Yes, you can. In this video, I'm going to explain how we did it with a five camera setup. All right, so like I just said at the top of the video, we did a live stream where we had five cameras, different versions of Blackmagic Pocket Cinema cameras, and we were able to have a setup. We were able to connect all the cameras into the ATEM SDI Extreme and also control all the cameras, synchronize them, get all the benefits as if they were connected via HDMI, but have longer cable runs 50, 100 feet with SDI. All right, first off, hat tip to here to record. They had a great video that helped me set up a lot of this stuff of how to set up controlling from an SDI control panel uh, and controlling Blackmagic cameras. So that was a great video. It helped set up the foundation a lot. But in this video, I also want to explain a bit more of how we uh, expanded the setup that we did and a few other things that we learned from that video. So a few things you need to do this, but also before I start, I have the ATEM XDI Extreme, which has eight inputs, but this will also work with any of the ATEM uh, SDI hardware, the smaller four port version of SDI with this, it will work the same exact way. And uh, I'll explain how it's all set up. So you need the ATEM, you need an SDI uh, Extreme, and then you need another piece of hardware. You need an adapter. I'm using this for explanation purposes, but this is not what you need because we rented the ones that we needed. So I'm just using this for demonstration purposes, but you need the bi-directional Blackmagic micro converter. This is just a one-directional SDI to HDMI, but you need the bi-directional one, which can take both uh, an input and an output of SDI. This only spits SDI out, so you need the other version. But basically you're going to have your camera via HDMI, connected into HDMI, connected into your bi-directional converter. You'll need power to power up your converter. And then you will have two SDI cables coming from your camera and going into your ATEM. So for this to work, you have to have two cable runs. Basically, HDMI is bi-directional. It can receive and send information both directions across the cable. SDI is only one directional. So we need a SDI connection to send the video signal into our ATEM. And then we need a second cable to go out of the ATEM and to give it camera controls, time code, sync, all of the stuff that we want inside the camera so that the operator can see what's happening. So from here, we'll have our two SDI cable connections. And again, this would be a bi-directional converter, not what I am displaying right now. And so we would take the SDI output from our camera and then plug it into our input on the ATEM. And then we would take our output from one of our ATEM outputs. If you're using the mini ATEM, you only get one output out of this, but I will explain how you can get multiple cameras out of a single output in a second. Uh, so you'll take this, put it on one of your outputs, and then this out would go on your SDI input on your bi-directional converter. And so now with this messy setup that we have here, we are able to both receive video from our camera and send signals back out to the camera. But now there are a few other things you gotta do to configure this to make sure it works correctly. And then you need to control your ATEM and plug it into a computer. You could obviously do this either via USB or plug it into the same network that your computer is on. And so once you're in your ATEM software, what you wanna do is go into your settings and then go into camera control and you wanna get very specific about what specific model your camera is controlling. As you can see here with our setup uh, that we just did with this five camera live stream, four of the cameras were 6K Pros. Uh, this is a 6K Pro. One of the cameras was just a regular 6K, not the Pro version. So we specified what camera each input was. And by default, if you load this up, it will just say any camera type. That's what's gonna show up by default. So you wanna come in here, you can see you have every option of every Blackmagic camera. I don't see the new Cinema cameras up, but I'm sure they'll add them in a software update. So you want to then specify specifically what camera 
you have, it just helps with the communication of sending out the correct controls when you're uh, trying to control what camera you want to control. The other thing we have to do, and I can't demo it right here on the software, but before you connect everything, you want to take your bi-directional converter, you want to plug in the USB-C, and it's got to be the newer version because we rented some from the rental house, and two of them were the older version that had the micro USB-A, which only gets power. The newer ones with the USB-C, you can plug it in your computer, you download the Blackmagic converter setup software, and then you'll be able to control the settings and set up some settings on your bi-directional converter. And the setting that you want to change is the camera ID setting. So by default, it will be camera ID one. The problem is if you start connecting multiple cameras, so we'll have camera one, two, three, four, five, we label them by letters, A, B, C, D, E, and then your outputs, which I will get to in a second of how to have multiple outputs. When it is sending the signal out, we want to know we need to have a camera ID on the box so that it knows, okay, this camera is camera one or camera two or camera three, and it is getting the correct signals from the computer where we're saying, okay, I want to adjust the exposure on camera three, which receiving device over the same SDI signal should get that control to adjust the exposure. So extremely important to set this up beforehand with a camera ID before you start mounting it on all the cameras. Another thing that I found the uh, software is a little quirky. So even if you set the camera ID, save it and close it, you wanna reopen it again and confirm that the camera ID did save. There are a couple instances that I found where I set it, close it out. I was getting weird stuff. Basically you'll notice weird stuff is happening is if you connect all of the cameras and then your feeds start jumping around and switching because the IDs are not correct and it's confusing different signals across the converter. So save your camera ID, reopen it again, confirm that it's saved, sometimes it didn't, close it, and then you should be good to go. Okay, and so that's pretty much the basic setup that you need to control a single camera. Now, as I've mentioned multiple times, we controlled five cameras from this, and if you are counting along, the ATEM Extreme only has four SDI outputs. So in theory, you could dedicate one to each camera for the out that is gonna go back to your bi-directional converter. However, that's probably not gonna be ideal because in my case, I had one output going to a monitor for our multicam view. I had another output going into a computer, which goes to vMix, which is where we do our downstream keys and we encode and we do all that. I can explain why we do that in a separate video if you're curious. Uh, so then that leaves two other outputs and then we have five cameras. So if you need to control more than one camera, which is highly likely if you're running something like the SDI, uh, the ATEM Extreme, then you need to get a distribution amplifier. And so basically this box just takes one SDI input in and amplifies and distributes that one signal across eight different outputs. And if you're counting, we've got eight inputs, we have eight outputs. So in theory, we could connect and control up to eight cameras off of this ATEM SDI extreme. So what you're gonna wanna do with this is power it up. There is no USB-C on this, there are no settings that you can adjust, you ju it just takes the input in and gives you eight outputs of the same thing. And then you'll plug this into one of your SDI outputs, and then you would plug it into your SDI input, and then we would swap out and take the output going back to the camera, and then run all of our outputs out of the uh, distribution amplifier box. And it doesn't matter which is which. But this is where the importance of setting up your camera IDs come in on your bi-directional converter because it needs to know when it is sending the signal out, if you're trying to control a specific camera, which camera it should receive those, those controls. And so that's where the ID comes in and is extremely important. So with this box set up, with all of your outputs set up here, going back into your camera, that is basically the gist of how we had this set up and how we were able to control five cameras. So one of the really great benefits that we had of this is we were able to run camera control off the ATEM. So this is the uh, ISO ATEM. So we're able to record the isolated inputs on a hard drive as a backup. But the really good thing was we were able to start all of the cameras in sync and also all of the cameras were able to get the same time code. So we're using the ATEM as the central clock. It was pushing the time code out to all the cameras. All the cameras had sync time code and we were able to from one spot, start recording and have the camera start recording internally so that everything was in sync. Didn't have to worry about the operators not remembering to start the camera. And we're able to get everything in sync later for post when they wanted to edit and refine the uh, performance that we were recording. So that part was awesome. The other thing that was really handy too was we got tally light 
input on the camera. So operators could see if their shot was on air or live, it would say on air in red on the back of the screen, the display screen. And we were running in program preview mode so that when we hit a button one time, it would go into preview and then you'd have to hit cut in order to send it into the uh, program mode. So if a camera was on standby on preview, it would also tell the operator that they were in preview. So ideally they would know, don't do any crazy camera movements because you're either live or about to be live. Uh, so keep your shot set up. So we were able to get camera operators uh, communication that way. Also, if you wanted to, we did not have this set up, but the bi-directional box has two HDMI uh, connections. So it has an HDMI input, but then it also has an HDMI output. And so if there was a second monitor on the camera, you could plug the HDMI into that monitor, and then you could actually send whatever feed you want to the cameras. I believe it would have to be the same feed to all of the cameras. You can't just say, okay, I want this camera to have the program output and I want this camera to have the multi-view. It would have to be the same output as whatever output you have assigned to your distribution amplifier with whatever settings you have in the ATEM. So you go to outputs and then adjust your setting of what you want to give it out. But this would be great. You give it, you can give the operator the program output so they can see what's live, or you could give them the multi-view output so they could see all of the angles and everything that is happening. So another also really cool setup thing that you could have here. And also one of the benefits sort of of the ATEM, and I have not really done this before, is that you can control the settings on the camera, you can control exposure, focus, um, all that stuff. It was a bit weird though, because the ATEM software and its camera control interface doesn't quite give you the same amount of information that you have on the camera. So I was trying to adjust some of the settings and the software, but then it was messing up the settings on the camera. DP was not happy about that. Uh, luckily we caught stuff before we recorded. So I kind of stopped trying to adjust anything on the camera because it just wasn't clear what exactly it was doing. Like the camera would shift back to like a weird shutter angle. And we just weren't quite sure like it wasn't representing on the screen what the settings were here. So the communication that way was a little bit confusing and not getting enough info. Uh, so I didn't control any of the settings of the uh, exposure from the ATEM. Um, I just let the DP set them and we just left it alone on the camera so that it wouldn't do anything weird. Uh, even resetting the settings on the computer uh, or on the ATEM software didn't reset the settings back to the way they were on the camera. So we left that alone, kind of curious a little bit more about what it should be happening because I don't have much experience in controlling the cameras over ATEM anyways. So I don't know if that was just a way the cameras behave, if it's a fact because it's a, a pocket cinema camera, or if it's um, something that's different because we're not using HDMI and maybe there is a limit to how much information you can get running it over SDI. The other thing um, that I kind of hit as a roadblock and I couldn't figure this out and I kept researching stuff was you we're using this as a central clock and I was trying to get time code to the sound mixer. We had a separate sound mixer. She had her sound recorder. She was trying to jam sync her hardware with the time code from here. There's no way I could not figure out how to do that. So if anyone knows how to do that, let me know in the comments. The things I tried, so basically all four SDI outputs do put out the time code on the output, but I cannot define a device that would convert the SDI 3G signal into a stripped down time code format that the sound recorder would accept or, the, or that it liked. I was looking into other things. I mean, so if you go level up, you can get an Everts like central clock or like the next level up in hardware where then everything's rack based and you have bigger ATEM uh, control panels. This was not that production. So in this price point range, I'm trying to still figure out what would the solution be to have a centralized clock. Uh, and you can't jam sync the ATEM. It's just running off whatever the software is, which is time of day or free run. You can't sync that. Blackmagic makes another piece of hardware that is a uh, basically a central clock kind of hardware, but that generates the time and then just sends it out everywhere. So that wouldn't solve the issue with how to get the time in the ATEM. So the ATEM has to be the central clock pushing everything out. I just don't know how to get the SDI output into uh, the time code from here into something that the uh, sound recorder accepts. So that was the one thing, still trying to figure out. If you know any solutions, let me know. And yeah, one more thing, I've been talking all about uh, the Blackmagic Pocket cameras and HDMI and all of that stuff. If you had an Ursa, you could do this exact same thing, exact same setup, you actually don't need to have the bidirectional converter uh, because the Ursa has an SDI input and an SDI output. I don't fully know how you would do the camera ID settings. I don't know if that was a setting that you would set on the camera. So that part I'm a little bit 
curious about. We didn't have that set up. I didn't test it. But from some early research, you can do the same setup with an Ursa. I just don't know the specifics of like what settings you would have to change, but it is doable. And then obviously, if you're getting up in kind of doing this consistently, uh, a lot more setups than the real idea solution would be either using fiber or using 2110, which Blackmagic released a bunch of new 2110 hardware at NAB this year. And I anticipate that that will be even amplified down the line with what you can do. Probably a 2110 version of an ATEM, maybe software updates where you could control and plug in to the uh, Pixis. Maybe the Pixis has a 1G connection, but the new cinema camera, which has a 10G connection. So yeah, I would anticipate more 2110 integrations and interfaces which would streamline everything and all of this stuff into literally an ethernet cable. Yeah, so that would probably be the future. But for now, if you do want to run long cable runs and control your Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera with a really cool multi-cam event in a large venue with large cable runs, this is the solution. Hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next episode.